Welcome everybody to uh, the new evidences for Joseph Smith uh, YouTube channel. We have another update for you. Uh, this one is an update to the Book of Mormon Metals Map Geography. This is an addendum that we've titled Alma's Miraculous Journey by the Power of God's Word. First, to summarize, um, with respect to geography, the Metals Map yielded only one solution for the Book of Mormon. This map fit the correct metals distribution to suggest that first inheritance would be in Ecuador, Nephi in Colombia, Zarahemla and Bountiful somewhere in Mesoamerica, uh, and Moron up in the Guadalajara area, sorry, the Guadalajara area of Mexico. <clears throat> also, this map fit Joseph Smith's editorials in the Times and Seasons, in which he said that Lehi landed south of the Isthmus of Darien, or Panama, and Zarahemla is in Guatemala. This also nicely positions the small neck of land, or the narrow strip of wilderness, uh, between the East and West Sea as being through Panama, uh, and the narrow neck of land further to the north with the narrow pass by the West Sea is the, the uh, Isthmus of Tehuantepec in southern Mexico. Now this geography means that the land of Nephi is separated from the land of Zarahemla by 1,400 miles. In part four, we discussed that separation and Alma's miraculous journey from the vicinity of City Nephi to Zarahemla. In part four, we provided evidence for the 1,400-mile separation. Specifically, number one, it took 400 years for the Nephites and the Lamanites to discover the Mulekites to the north in Zarahemla. It wasn't until 210 BC that Mosiah the first journeys from the city Nephi north and discovers Zarahemla. It then took another 150 years before the Lamanite kings were able to consolidate their power and position to extend their control north and threaten Zarahemla militarily. So it was in 72 BC that Moroni, chief captain of the Nephite armies, commonly referred to as Captain Moroni, established a defensible border between Zarahemla and the expanded land of Nephi. In fact, they took the Lamanites that were in the wildernesses west and east of Zarahemla and relocated them south of the border. We also learned that um, about 120 BC, when we looked at the narrative timeline of Limhi's journey from the land Nephi north to Zarahemla, that that was probably a four to five month journey. But we also saw about the same time that Alma's journey with the church showed a what would have to have been a miraculous 12 to 20 way, 21 day journey. Now, Alma's very short journey and short travel time constrains the Mesoamerican model of Book of Mormon geography. Uh, despite the internal Book of Mormon evidence supporting the reality that these lands were quite distant from each other. So this addendum provides additional evidence for Alma's miraculous journey. So is a miraculous journey by Alma consistent with the scriptures? Well, of course, we knew, do know of several miraculous journeys. We have Moses crossing the Red Sea and feeding the children of Israel in the wilderness. We have the Jaredites with their lighted barges. We have Lehi with his Leahona. And we have the wise men from the east that follow a star guide to come to Bethlehem. Likewise, the people of Zarahemla are, quote, struck with wonder and amazement and knew not what to think after Mosiah II caused to be read the account of Alma. So something happened there that 
got their wonder and amazement. Well, let's uh, look at Mosiah's journey to Zarahemla first and see if we can characterize that. Uh, he traveled to the land and of Zarahemla, discovering the land of Zarahemla for the Nephites at about 210 BC. In Omni, we're told that Mosiah was warned of the Lord to flee the land of Nephi, and they were led by many preachings and prophesyings, and they were admonished continually by the word of God, which is a reference to scripture. And they were led by the power of his arm through the wilderness until they came down into Zarahemla. The phrase by the power of his arm is used only one other time in the Book of Mormon. It's found in Enos chapter 1, verse 13, as by the power of his holy arm to describe God preserving a record of the Nephites to be brought forth in some future day, which of course is the Book of Mormon. How long this journey took and what miracles were experienced on the way is not known from the account. Now let's look at uh, Alma's journey to Zarahemla. This is Alma and the Faithful Church traveling from Helam to Zarahemla about 120 BC, at the same time that Limhi is traveling up to the land of Zarahemla. We read about this in an abridged account by Mormon in Mosiah 23 and 24. And concerning the journey itself, Mormon simply says that after Alma had been in the wilderness 12 days, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla. An element of the miracle was the incredibly short travel time. In the land of Helam, we're told that the voice of the Lord came to them as a group on two reported occasions, one to lighten their burdens and secondly to tell them of their impending escape. To Alma, the head of the church, the Lord then says, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage. Alma, the younger, recalls that when he was on this journey, and he must have been very young at the time, that we were delivered by the mercy and power of God. The Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. So the Lord said, I will go down with thee, Alma, and deliver this people out of bondage. But what does travel by the power of his word mean? What does that phrase mean? As an example, we consider Nephi, the prophet just prior to the birth of Christ, who was giving, given the sealing power. In Helam in chapter 10, Nephi records the following, that a voice came to him saying, Behold, thou art Nephi, and I am God. And God tells him that he shall have power, meaning Nephi would have power over this people, to smite the earth with famine and with pestilence and destruction, according to the people's wickedness. Notice in the phrases here, that what Nephi was to say to a temple or say to a mountain or to say with respect to what God would do was the authority and the action of power. So the word of God given to Nephi was critical here. And now behold, I command you that ye shall go and declare unto this people that thus saith the Lord God, Except ye repent, ye shall be smitten, even unto destruction. Nephi immediately went on this mission, and we are told that the power of God was with him, and that the people had no power at all over him. Uh, when they tried to take him and cast him into prison, he was taken by the Spirit and conveyed away out of their midst. Nephi later uses this power to replace the war that's going on among the Nephites with famine in a hopes of calling them to repentance by this means. And so it was done according to the words of Nephi. 
Later in Helaman chapter 12, Nephi explains this power of God. He says that the dust of the earth at the command of our great and everlasting God and at his voice is activated and moved and changed. By the power of his voice, so here's this phrase, by the power of his voice they are broken up. By the power of his voice does the whole earth shake. By the power of his voice do the foundations rock. He emphasizes it even more by saying, if God say to the earth, move, it's moved, and so on and so on. So this emphasizes the importance and the strength of the word of God as executed by the voice of God himself or as executed by his authorized servants who are given this authority. So by the power of his word or voice, that is the instrument of power uh, of God and his authorized servant. He is commanding the elements. The elements obey the word or the voice of God. The uncertainty principle of quantum physics seems to override the Newtonian physics at the mass scale. The elements act in accord with the command of God rather than the probabilities that would be normally expected. Consider, for example, uh, that God touches the stones that the brother of Jared brings to him, and they shine with light and illuminate the Jaredite barges, barges across the ocean during their long journey. Jacob talks about uh, the creation of the earth and the creation of man as having been done by the power of his word. Mormon emphasizes this also, but then also includes that by the power of his word, miracles are brought to pass. Now let's look at some examples of this in practice. The mission, for example, of the sons of Mosiah to the Lamanites was considered by most to be an impossible task, but in fact it was very successful. Ammon says, I will boast of my God, for in his strength I can do all things. Yea, behold, many mighty miracles have we wrought in this land because of the power of his word, which is in us, and we have been instruments in his hands. In, of bringing this great and marvelous work. Also, we consider, for example, those that are referred to as the three Nephites. For in his name, meaning Jesus Christ, could they remove mountains, and in his name could they cause the earth to shake, and by the power of his word did they cause prisons to tumble to the earth. Yea, even the fiery furnace could not harm them, neither wild beasts nor poisonous serpents, because of the power of his word. In other instances, we learn of them being thrown into pits and buried in the earth, but the earth could not hold them. Other forms of this phrase, by the power of his word, is also available to us. When we consider, for example, reference to the power of God, Alma the Younger and Amulek had power given to them insomuch that they could not be confined in dungeons. Neither was it possible that any man could slay them, although, of course, men tried to. We read in Alma chapter 14 the account of the wicked priests who came into the prison and smote them on the cheeks, demanding a sign from them and uh, day after day, and then how the, the prison is brought down upon their heads and kills all of the wicked priests, freeing Alma and Amulek. We have another example uh, with the voice of God, uh, with uh, the brothers Nephi and Lehi, <clears throat> who go on a mission into Zarahemla that at that time was occupied by the Lamanites. They had power and authority given unto them that they might speak, and they also had what they should speak given unto them. They were cast into prison, uh, and they were encircled about by fire. The Lamanites dared not to lay hands upon them. They feared that they would die if they did so. And Nephi says to them, fear not. 
it is God that has shown unto you this marvelous thing. And there came a voice saying, Repent ye, and seek no more to destroy my servants. And again the voice came saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We also have the experience of God's voice immediately after the great destruction that occurred in the American continent after, at the time of the death of Jesus Christ. After the great destructions, we hear the following from God. There was a voice heard crying, Zarahemla, I burned with fire. Moroni, I caused to be sunk in the sea. Moroniha, I covered with earth. And many great destructions have I caused to come upon this land. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So phrases and words for miracles were used to describe the journey by Alma. To Alma the Lord says, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage. The phrase, by the power of his word, describes the journey as a miracle by God's power. There are ten other times that this phrase is used in the Book of Mormon, in each case referring to miraculous events done by God's commanding power over the earth's elements. And when God gives this power to his servants, miracles occur. When the voice of the Lord is heard, miracles occur. So in conclusion, there is in fact evidence for a 1400 mile separation between city Nephi and Zarahemla, and also for Alma's miraculous journey. One, it took 400 years for the Nephites and the Lamanites to discover the Mulekites, 1,400 miles to the north, in Zarahemla. It then took another 150 years before the Lamanite kings had consolidated their power and control all the way up to Zarahemla to pose a military threat. Third, the narrative timeline of Limhi's journey in about 120 BC shows that that must have been a four to five month journey. Likewise, the narrative timeline of Alma's journey at the same time shows a 12 to 21 day miraculous journey. This is not an internal conflict in the Book of Mormon. Uh, the miraculous journey is supportable. The language used to describe the journey of Alma is language that was used throughout the Book of Mormon specifically for miraculous events the voice of the Lord to Alma, I will go with thee and deliver this people. And the phrase, by the power of his word, shows Alma's journey was a miracle wrought by the power of God. This phraseology, along with voice replacing word, is only used 10 other times in the Book of Mormon. In each instance, this phrase describes miraculous events done by the power of God. Other forms of the phrase all support the same conclusion. Please like our New Evidences for Joseph Smith YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. Let them know that there is a new Book of Mormon geography proposal that supports the Prophet Joseph Smith. And also that reveals something that we have not understood before. And that is that Alma and the church's journey from the land Helam to Zarahemla was a miraculous journey. Thank you very much.